بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس دس از لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی ون اینڈ ٹاپک آف ٹو ڈیز لیکچر از وکٹورین ایج پوئٹ رابٹ براؤننگ دس لیکچر از پارٹ آف دا کورس ہسٹری آف انگلش لٹریچر نیو کلاسکس ٹو ڈیٹ آئی ایم یور ٹیچر محمد آصف خان Lecturer, Department of English, Kohart University of Science and Technology. Dear students, the outline of uh, the main points which we are going to discuss in today's lecture is uh, that first of all, I will introduce you to the very important poet Robert Browning and uh, then we will discuss uh, the main points features of his poetry and uh, that will be that will be followed by the discussion on his uh, important works and uh, after that i will uh, give you a brief uh, brief information about uh, the obscurity of uh, robert browning's poetry and in the end i will give you comparison of uh, Robert Browning and Alfred Tennyson and in this I will conclude this very lecture so let's start uh, with the introduction of uh, Robert Browning he was born on 7th May 1812 and he died on 12th Dece- December 1889 he was uh, an English poet and playwright but he is he is different from other poets because uh, he is known as uh, a sage and philosopher poet his poems are known for their irony characterization dark humor in that very poetry and uh, we see that robert browning presents uh, social commentary within the historical settings and he has uh, and he uses uh, challenging vocabulary and syntax but uh, the most uh, important thing robert browning is famous for is uh, his mastery of dramatic monologue so so we see or when we study his poetry we observe that uh, browning is mainly remembered for the the surprising and uh, a surprising vigor and hope uh, that uh, that is uh, the characteristic uh, of all his works and we find uh, these uh, elements uh, in in most uh, of uh, in most of his work that force and strength that is uh, missing in some of the other poets of that time so he is uh, the poet of love and uh, of life when we further go deeply into the works of uh, robert browning we see that uh, he is interested in the study of uh, the individual soul and uh, he presents uh, very fine shades of uh, the psychological aspects of uh, human beings in this uh, he tries to explain those hidden motives and uh, those principles which uh, govern and which uh, uh, which are uh, the main reason which uh, directs uh, individuals for actions thus uh, in order to understand his poems we see that uh, a reader has uh, to be mentally very much alert if he is not vigilant when he is studying uh, the poems of uh, a poetry of robert browning you will see that uh, most of the readers fail to understand those uh, delicacies of the life which are uh, called as uh, psychological delicacies of the life here i would like to mention one another thing that uh, robert browning is uh, 
the most uh, inspiring poet in the English language because uh, he has a tremendous influence on the readers but uh, he is only open for the alert readers because only alert readers or the reader who is vigilant he gets connect to to his poetry so the special thing is that uh, his strength his joy of life his uh, strong faith and uh, his unshakable optimism enters uh, into the life of serious readers of the poetry and make them a different man so that is the quality if uh, a reader is vigilant and alert you see that uh, robert browning inspires them inspires them through his strength through his uh, joy of life strong faith and optimism and uh, in the end we see that his poetry is so inspiring that uh, it changes uh, the man to to be a different man so now let's discuss uh, the important works of robert browning and the first one is uh, pauline that was published in 1833 and uh, this is uh, the first poem of robert browning as i told you earlier that he was famous for his uh, monologues in the same way pauline is also a monologue and it is uh, basically addressed to pauline it deals with the incidents in the development of the soul monologues and uh, the human soul these are the top uh, two concerns of robert browning in this poem pauline is autobiographical and it is basically a fragment of uh, personal confession under the thin dramatic disguise he has uh, disguised uh, his personal confessions in a dramatic cover so the second important one is uh, paracelsus 1835 it is uh, in the form of drama and in this drama he has presented four characters and this poem is also the story of uh, incidents in the development of the soul now let's move towards some other important works and we see that uh, browning's uh, reputation as uh, one of the great poets of english literature was established in the true sense when uh, he published the following works we see that uh, the dramatic lyrics in these collections were poetry of new kind in england so the first uh, important work uh, of uh, robert browning is uh, dramatic lyrics and uh, basically dramatic lyric is uh, a collection of uh, english poems and uh, this very work was uh, for the first time published in 1842 and uh, this collection is uh, part of uh, a series of self published books uh, that is uh, entitled uh, as bells and pomegranates this uh, poem dramatic lyrics it includes poems that are examples of dramatic monologues it includes very important poems and most of these poems are dramatic monologues and uh, dramatic monologue is a form that was uh, pioneered by browning and uh, in this we see that uh, the character or characters uh, reveal their own personalities what the characters are doing they are revealing their own personalities it includes uh, personalities and shortcomings as they tell their own stories uh, in these poems so dramatic lyrics is a collection which is uh, part of uh, a series of uh, publications named as bells and pomegranates and the main focus in uh, these poems is uh, on the dramatic monologues in which characters reveal their own personalities the second important work is uh, dramatic romances and lyrics this very work uh, is again a collection of uh, english poems by robert browning and uh, we see that uh, this work was first published 
in 1848 and it was uh, published in London and uh, it was the seventh volume in that series which I already mentioned to you uh, which Robert Browning was uh, self-publishing and uh, the title of uh, those publication was uh, Bells and Pomegranates. This collection has uh, some of the well-known poems uh, of Robert Browning. So very important collection, dramatic romances and lyrics. Now we move uh, towards uh, the third important uh, work of Robert Browning that is Men and Women. Again this uh, work Men and Women is a collection of 51 poems and uh, it is uh, basically published in two volumes. First it was published in 1855 and now this very collection is uh, generally considered uh, to contain some of uh, the best known works or best known poetry of the Browning. When it was actually published it was uh, not uh, received well and it was uh, sold poorly but its uh, reputation and fame changed later on and now we see that it is categorized among the best uh, works of the Browning's poetry. Now let's move uh, towards uh, the fourth important work that is Dramatis Personae and uh, this work is uh, again a collection of uh, poetry by Robert Browning and it was first published in 1864. And the style of these poems is uh, very much similar to to the poems uh, in the collections I already mentioned to you and uh, that style is uh, the dramatic style and uh, we see that the speciality of Robert Browning is that uh, uh, it has wide range of narrators uh, in these very poems and in these poems we see that uh, narrator is usually in a situation that reveals to the reader some of the aspects of his uh, personality. So Browning is uh, actually very much concerned about uh, revealing uh, the actual personality of the human being. So that is uh, the main focus of Robert Browning in his poetry. Now let's move uh, towards uh, the last important uh, work which I have listed here and that is uh, The Ring and the Book. This work, uh, The Ring and the Book, uh, is a long dramatic narrative poem. It's not a collection but it's a long dramatic poem and uh, we see it is very close to verse novel because it consists of uh, 21,000 lines. So it was uh, published in uh, four volumes and uh, it took uh, a long time and we see that it was published between 1868 to 1869. So these are the important works which uh, I included here and uh, I believe that uh, the most important uh, aspect uh, here which uh, Browning is uh, focusing on is uh, the dramatic element uh, of his poetry and the second thing is that uh, he is uh, he is again emphasizing on revealing the actual personality of the human being. So these are the important works which uh, established and firmly and truly established uh, the Browning's reputation. Some other important works uh, which I would like to mention here are the dramatic lyrics including Bishop Blogram's Apology in a gondola. After that uh, we have uh, Porphyria's Lover. Another important work is Fra Lippo Lippi, The Last Ride Together, Child Roland to a Dark Tower Came, A Grammarian's Funeral, Rabbi bin Ezra and uh, the last two important works are Prospes and uh, my last touches. So dear students these are the important works which uh, I mentioned uh, to you. After that uh, now we will look at one of uh, the flaw in uh, the poetry of Robert Browning and uh, that is Browning's obscurity. 
So this is uh, the main flaw of uh, Robert Browning's poetry and we see that uh, that he is uh, having uh, such ambiguous and subtle thoughts that language does not have uh, that power and potency to express them. And uh, for that reason, sometimes we see that his poetry creates obscurity. So the first reason for the obscurity of Robert Browning's poetry is that uh, he is uh, having such uh, type of thoughts, such ambiguous and uh, such uh, delicate and uh, fine thoughts which he is unable to express uh, in the language because language does not have uh, that uh, potency, uh, that effectiveness uh, to articulate such type of thoughts. And uh, the second reason for his uh, obscurity is that he is careless as an artist. He is not that much uh, careful about his art as uh, Alfred Tennyson is. And uh, because of uh, his carelessness towards his art, towards his uh, poetry, we see that sometimes uh, readers feel that he is uh, unable to grasp the ideas. Now we will look at uh, uh, Robert Browning within the whole scenario of, of uh, Victorian age. And here I would like to mention another important poet, and that is uh, Alfred Tennyson. Browning and Tennyson were contemporaries, but we see that uh, these two poets present uh, very different personalities, having very distinct qualities. So Robert Browning's and Tennyson's uh, poetic uh, careers ran more or less parallel to each other, but they are having very distinct qualities. We see that uh, during uh, lifetime, Robert Browning was not considered as great as uh, Tennyson, but uh, after his death later on, uh, the point of view of the critics, uh, it uh, changed uh, in the favor of uh, Robert Browning, and now Browning is ranked superior to Tennyson, and that is because of the uh, depth he has and the originality of the thoughts which he presents. So that is uh, the distinction between Robert Browning and uh, Alfred Tennyson. Now I will give you a detailed comparison between Alfred Tennyson and Robert Browning. So the first thing is that Tennyson is uh, first the artist and then the teacher. For Tennyson, art is more important than the message. But for uh, Browning, we see that the message is more important and he is less careful about uh, the art. So because of uh, because of uh, this carelessness uh, of the form, we see that sometimes his poetry becomes obscure. The second thing is that Tennyson always writes about the subjects which are, which are very refined, delicate, elegant, and uh, charming and attractive. On the other hand, we see that Browning deals with the subjects which are very rough and ugly. Basically, Robert Browning aims to show that truth lies hidden in both the evil and the good. So that is the difference between Tennyson and Browning. Another difference between Alfred Tennyson and Browning is that Tennyson's message reflects the growing order of the age. As we discussed in the, in the lecture on Tennyson, that uh, he is very much... Uh, concerned about law and order in the world. So we can sum up uh, the message of Robert Browning in one word, and that is law. So Alfred Tennyson believes in disciplining the individual's will and subordinating uh, the will of individual to the universal laws. On the other hand, Browning believes in the triumph of uh, the individual will or the problems and difficulties. Because to him, self is not subordinate, but supreme to, to the laws of uh, this universe. And we see that uh, his poetry reflects powerful optimism. Whereas uh, Tennyson poetry that paints helpless type of pessimism. Another difference between uh, Alfred Tennyson 
and Robert Browning is that Tennyson's genius is mainly lyrical, whereas uh, the Robert Browning's genius is uh, predominantly dramatic because uh, most of his uh, great poems are written in the form of dramatic monologue. So now, as uh, we discussed uh, the comparison at uh, Alfred Tennyson and Robert Browning, here I will conclude uh, the lecture on Robert Browning that uh, he was uh, basically a philosopher poet and uh, he was famous for his dramatic monologues and he included uh, that uh, surprising vigor and hope that is uh, the main feature of all his work and overall we see that there is uh, a line of uh, optimism in his poetry and for that reason he is a poet of love and life Along with that, he presents uh, the fine shades of psychological study of human beings and uh, in his most of works, we see that he is presenting the development of the human soul. So, that is uh, the end of today's lecture and uh, thank you very much uh, for listening passionately. I hope that uh, after listening to this lecture on Robert Browning, you will be having better understanding of uh, the poet uh, under discussion. And uh, we also revised uh, Lord Alfred Tennyson. In this way, now we have better understanding of uh, the Victorian age poetry. So thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.